Hi everyone and welcome back to The Week's Nest. In today's video, I have a top 10 Dollar Tree farmhouse home decor DIYs video for you. So in no particular order, let's get started. Our first Dollar Tree farmhouse DIY is this Thy Will Be Done sign. I'm drawing inspiration from this Hobby Lobby magnet. I just loved this magnet and knew I wanted to turn this into a sign for my living room. So I am using this Dollar Tree Halloween sign. Dollar Tree has these out like for every different season. It's just like the long seasonal sign. Any sign will do, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a coat of white Adirondack chalk paint. And before I paint anything, I'm taking off that hanger. Now I'm going to show you a way that I like to paint signs, especially these type of signs from Dollar Tree to make it look really like chippy and distressed without distressing it. So as you see me painting the white paint over this sign, I am not dipping my brush that much and I'm kind of going heavier in the middle and then towards the ends of the sign or anywhere that I want it distressed, I kind of just move the paint and have less. And as you see here, it just gives it that distressed look without having to use more paint, sand it or anything like that. So I used my Cricut for the font and the little like leaf decal on this. I will leave the fonts that I used down below in the description box. I get my fonts from defont.com. And I just love this. This sign says, thy will be done. And I just love having different like Bible verses or quotes, just inspirational things around my home. And this will be going above the TV in my living room. So I just really loved the sentiment of this sign. Now I cut out this like farmhouse leaf on my Cricut, but I'm gonna show you, it's really simple to do if you don't have a Cricut. Basically, you just draw a line and then I kind of think of the leaves as drawing a heart with the line going through and you get the same look. But since I have my Cricut, I am just going to use that. And I didn't really like how bright this green vinyl was, but it's all I had on hand. So I'm gonna go back in with that white Adirondack paint and kind of dry brush over the um, green vinyl and just kind of making it look more blended and distressed. Now to hang this on the back, I'm gonna take a strand of the Dollar Tree nautical rope, some craft sticks, which I cut, and then I apply some hot glue on that, and then press down on either side of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you center this so that when you hang your sign, it is nice and centered and even on the wall. And I love the way that this turned out. I have this above my TV, which you're gonna see. I was gonna show you like a really styled picture of this, but this is real life. This is what it looks like whenever I am trying to display my DIYs. My kids are going crazy. I have a nickel back on in the background, but that's just real life. But yeah, it's just a really pretty sign. I love having this in my living room and just looking at it and just a really nice reminder, especially in the times that we are in now. Our next farmhouse decor DIYs will be these two Dollar Tree projects. So this is kind of a two for one going into more of the modern farmhouse style. For our next two Dollar Tree DIYs, I will be building off of two previous DIY projects that I've done on my channel, which I will have down in the description box. So behind my couch, I have this part of the wall that I have some Dollar Tree picture frames which I'm going to take down and I am going to build off this anthropology inspired Dollar Tree DIY that I did recently, which I can link down below or put up in the cards. Really easy, taking a Dollar Tree gold Sharpie or like metallic marker they call it. I'm gonna do that same like a line and leaf look that I did in the first DIY in this video and do it on the top right side and the bottom left. I did this, like I said, in my Dollar Tree Anthropology inspired video recently. 
and I just love the impact that this gives. It's super simple, and I love these Dollar Tree like 8x10 pre-matted frames. I don't see them often in Dollar Tree, but they're great, and I just feel like this nice detail just kind of adds a nice pop to them. So going along with the frames, building off of another one of my Boho Dollar Tree DIYs that I did a while ago on my channel, one of my friends here on YouTube, Julia from The Mug Life, I'm going to put her channel down below because if you like Boho decor, she is your girl. She was inspired by my previous DIY and she did it so the two pieces were one like larger piece. So that's what I'm going to do with my own twist. I loved the way that she kind of drew off of what I did and I kind of like the what she did better. So I'm going to kind of give it that look, but I took the triangles apart and I'm going to take Waverly's mineral chalk paint and dry brush over the frame of the two triangles. On the top point of both of the triangles, I'm going to take some Apple Barrel black acrylic paint and just kind of highlight the point of both of the triangles. Um, I found that the paint was a little bit difficult to apply, so I did have to wait for it to dry and then add a few more layers for it to be more opaque. Originally, I was just going to hot glue the two together, but as you see here, apparently my hot glue is not strong enough. So I had to add some Popsicle six. I added three going vertically, one in the middle, two on either side of that. And then I put another Popsicle stick going horizontal just to really reinforce this sign. And I love repurposing previous DIYs. It's such a great way to just keep your home decor very budget friendly. And I like the distressing, the pop of black, building off of what I had originally. It just really brightens this. And I love how this looks against those picture frames, definitely giving that boho decor vibe, very modern. And I just love this look. Our next Dollar Tree DIY is this update on a Dollar Tree 11 by 14 picture frame. I'm going to show you how I took this plain black framed 11 by 14 picture frame from Dollar Tree. I have had this for a while. I'm actually going to reuse one that I did over the holidays and I'm going to keep the shiplap looking wrapping paper as the background, but I'm going to layer one of these craft canvas sheets from burlapfabric.com. They come in a six pack. I will put them down in the description box below. And I went into Cricut Design Space and cut a image that was already there. And I'm going to use my Cricut Easy Press to adhere this. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, I will show you a non-Cricut canvas project in this video. Also, things like a stencil, fabric paint, there's a lot of different options with canvas, but I really loved this design. Like I said, it was already in the Cricut design space, so I decided to go with this. And then once I applied that decal, I just took a crafter square regular, um, not pen, yeah, paint pen. And I just kind of highlighted the corners. Now you're gonna see that this did curl a bit because of the heat that I applied. But once I layered back the picture frame, put the backing back in, the curling obviously was not a problem because that smoothed everything out. I wanted to add that I am currently working on a Cricut like heat press project idea video. So that will be coming up soon as well as my laundry video. I'm working on everything guys. I'm a little bit behind as I'm sure you can understand, but I love how this turned out. Super easy. I have this on my coffee bar paired with some other DIYs that I have done recently that are that modern farmhouse or boho farmhouse decor look. So I can also put some other farmhouse um, or modern farmhouse projects I've done. And for our next project, what is a top 10 farmhouse decor video without a farmhouse wreath? So I will show you how to make this super minimal, quick and easy farmhouse wreath using Dollar Tree supplies. For this wreath, you will need two packs of the green garland from Dollar Tree. 
You can use any greenery. I like this because it's wired, so it's much easier to apply. And some type of wreath form or you don't need the Dollar Tree wreath form. I actually ended up using the Dollar Tree like 3D floral, I don't know what it was, like a ball you can make. Basically, you're just gonna want a wire wreath form that is thin. So if you do use the Dollar Tree one, just take the like one of the layers out of it basically. So for this, I'm gonna take some wired jute. This is from burlapfabric.com. Any jute is fine. I love working with things that are wired because it really just adheres nice. You don't need to use hot glue and you can really shape it to the way that you want it. So I just wrapped that around. Of course, I was just short, but we'll cover it with the greenery. Now you're gonna see me. At first, I only thought I needed one of these vines. I have also used one of these vines um, with a Trash a Treasure that I did. I love pairing Dollar Tree with like thrifted items. I can link that or put that up in the cards if you're interested to see other ways to use this. But one was not enough. It just looked too minimal. So I just layered two. I love the way that this looks. I like to keep my wreaths on the more minimal side and I just love this. This could be left out year round. And I love that I was able to make it using Dollar Tree supplies. Our next Dollar Tree DIY is this really fun modern farmhouse kind of pom-pom vase that was so easy to make. Modern farmhouse pom-pom vase. So I'm going to start with a Dollar Tree vase. I used this in a Valentine's Day DIY. I'm going to repurpose it. I'm always repurposing my projects. That is just one way you can always save money and make your decor really budget friendly. So I am going to take off the handles that I made on the vase previously and taking some Dollar Tree nautical rope, I'm going to hot glue that all around the vase covering it. Um, I always hot glue all the way around on the bottom, in the middle and on the top. I don't do it so much going throughout. You just want to make sure that you have it so that it's secured and I needed some more rope so you guessed it repurposing another project and taking off that rope to cover this vase. It doesn't matter what vase you use. It could be a recycled one, something from Dollar Tree. You're going to cover it anyway so it doesn't matter. So my inspiration for this modern farmhouse vase was this jute or not jute rope covered um, basket with pom-poms. So I'm going to go ahead and make some pom-poms to go with this piece. So to make the pom-poms, I will be using this small pom-pom maker. I just did a video recently with this, which I can link down below so you get another idea of how to use these in your decor. But basically, I just took some cotton yarn. You can even use yarn from the Dollar Tree, but this is what I had on hand. And you basically wrap it around one side, loop it through, wrap it around the other. I know I'm showing this fast. I will link to a slower tutorial I have on using this, but it's super easy. So once everything's wrapped, you just go along both sides and cut. Cut another piece of yarn, which you are going to tie through the middle. And then once you take apart this cutter or device, whatever you want to call it, pom-pom maker, there we go. You have a pom-pom, which then you could just fluff and trim where you need to. And then I'm going to go ahead and make three of these for this project. And to apply, I'm going to hot glue them and center them going down vertically in the front of this vase. Taking this yarn that I picked up at Dollar Tree like last year and mixing it with that same cotton cream yarn, I am going to crochet a basic chain long enough to make two handles on either side of this vase. I will link down below a recent boho crochet decor video I did. If you don't know how to crochet, you can also just braid yarn together. I've done that in plenty of 
DIYs in the past, but I just thought it would be nice to add another element of, you guessed it, if you've watched my videos before, texture <laughs> to this. And then I'm gonna hot glue the handles on either side of this vase, just to give it a little more, I don't know, I, I wanna say texture because I just say it all the time and I'm sure I probably drive you guys crazy, but here you go. I love this. It is just so fun. Definitely modern farmhouse. I have this paired with some other projects I've done recently on my coffee bar and I just love how this turned out. Super easy and budget friendly using Dollar Tree items and yeah, I just really like how this turned out. Next, I will show you how to get these really farmhouse laundry signs using Dollar Tree foam board. I see these all the time in farmhouse decor on Pinterest, in Home Goods, Kirkland's, you name it. And they were so easy and inexpensive to make on my own. So I will be using this assorted pack of basswood. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I originally got it because it has these thinner sheets that I want to use with my Cricut Maker but I've been too afraid, I don't know why, to cut the wood with my Cricut Maker. So I didn't realize that it came with these kind of like strand, not strands, like strips, there we go, of the basswood. They come in assorted thickness, so I'm just grouping them in fours and making sure that each grouping is even in the thickness. And originally I was going to frame them out, but I decided to change my mind. Well. I did change my mind. <laughs> so taking the Waverly Antique Wax, I am going to, with a sponge brush, um, paint this on. I didn't wipe away the wax because I really wanted a dark look. If I wanted it to be a little lighter, I just would have wiped it away. Um, and I know probably using a sponge brush is not the best for this because I know they kind of like waste a little bit of paint because they kind of absorb and hold things in, but I really need to buy new paint brushes and I have a huge pack of sponge brushes or foam brushes on hand, so that is what I used. And I just went ahead and painted all of them. I didn't end up using all of them, but no big deal. I will use them in an upcoming project for something. So using the Dollar Tree black foam board, not the poster board, you want it to be the foam board. It obviously is sturdier than poster board. Um, I kind of, well not kind of, I took the pieces of the basswood. They were about eight inches in this pack each. And then I, with my ruler, measured them and with a chalk pen, just anything that's gonna stand out against the white, um, stand out against the black, that's why I used white. Sorry guys, it's been a long day. Um, I framed out my 8x8 eight eight boxes and that is what I will be cutting out for these signs. As I was doing this project, I had an idea for a really fun spring DIY with kind of a similar concept, so stay tuned for that. If it works out the way it is in my head, it's going to be super cute, so I cannot wait to share that. So I'm going to take my rotary cutter and my ruler. I like to use the ruler against it just to make sure I get that really crisp line and cut these boxes out. Be careful you don't bend the foam board or press too hard because then it kind of looks warped. And in one of my previous videos, one of my subscribers who is a quilter had said to never cut with the rotary blade going towards you, which I was, which I was so happy that she like brought that to my attention because that should have been something I thought of, but it wasn't. So I was cutting away from myself this time, which is much safer. So I'm glad that she brought that to my attention. And again, just carefully cut these out. Don't fo force the foam board out. Um, it's gonna just warp the foam board and you don't want that. It's gonna kind of ruin the sign. So originally I wanted to, like I said, have these pieces of basswood kind of border on all four sides the foam board. I love the way that this dark wood stain looks against the black. I always use the white foam board from Dollar Tree and kind of forget about the black one, but I have a lot of projects in mind with this black foam board. It just really, to me, brings out that modern farmhouse look. So I decided not to do that. I don't know why I liked the way that it looked on all four sides, 
but I thought it would look really cute just to take a piece on the top and the bottom for each. So for all three signs, I just applied a little bit of hot glue to the top of the foam board sign and on the bottom. You don't wanna use too much hot glue because it'll seep out and then especially against the black, hot glue is not forgiving against the black foam board. You will see that if you use too much hot glue. And let me know down in the comments if you like this combo of the dark wood against the black. I love it against white also, but for some reason I was just really feeling this black look for these signs and the other project as well. Once I had all three signs with the basswood hot glued on, I'm gonna apply my vinyl decals. Again, I have a free printable down below if you're interested with all of the um, phrases that I used in this video. If you want those, you can also use Dollar Tree um, letter stickers. You can use your freehand writing if you're good at that, which that is one of my like crafting goals this year. I bought myself a calligraphy book on Amazon, which I'm loving so far. I can link that down below if you're interested. And if you're like me and wanna improve your handwriting, and as you see here, I am notorious for losing the dot on all my eyes, my vinyl. So I just took that white chalk pen. This is an Arteza chalk pen, which I have a coupon code for. And any white pen is fine, you just want it to blend. So I did that for all three signs. And then I took a piece of burlap. I've used this in a few of my projects before as a hanger. I hot glued that, I just looped it. Oh, not looped it, folded it in half, hot glued it. Then it took a craft stick, hot glued that, and pressed that over. This just helps make sure that the twine or jute, whatever you're using, stays in place. And this is how the signs turned out. I had these in my laundry room wall by my washer dryer, and I absolutely love them. They're the exact modern farmhouse look that I was going for. I've seen these in the stores similar, and I was able to achieve this for like, Ten, under ten dollars so they got the basswood but if you have wood on hand in the foam board you can easily make this project for like a dollar or two this next dollar tree diy is another two for one i'm going to show you how to update a dollar tree planter as well as make your own faux tree using dollar tree supplies this dollar tree diy is going to be a two in one i love these kind of like olive branch trees fig trees um, here is one, for example, from West Elm that's almost $400. So we're going to make a very budget-friendly option using Dollar Tree items, again, things in my craft stash, to get the look for way less. I will be reusing this Dollar Tree planter that I painted in a previous uh, DIY, which I can link down below. Um, but basically, I wanted this to just look a little more, I don't know, pizzazzed. That's even, yeah, pizzazzed. Or give pizzazz? I don't know. I'm taking this Dollar Tree nautical rope, and this took me forever in a day to get the three strands from the way the rope was originally. I see so many DIYers take this apart, and it takes them like two seconds, but it took me a hot minute. So I just took it apart, and then the way that I'm gonna use this is I'm gonna take the one strand, fold it in half, and fold it in half again to kind of give it a little more bulk. But I will show you how I do that in a second. Before I apply the Dollar Tree nautical rope, I just use some of this jute ribbon that I had. I've used this in a few of my projects recently and just hot glued that to the top of the planter. Now, like I said, I took each of the three strands one at a time, folded it in half, then again, and kind of wrapped that around so it gave it a little more bulk, if that makes sense, and then looped it in the back, and then I hot glued it that way. Um, I know you can wrap these around individually. I just felt like this took less time and it kind of had the rope pieces staying where I wanted them better. Um, you can certainly just see, I just feel like it just, it took less time. You can wrap them around individually, whatever you want. And then I just wanted the top of this to match the bottom. So taking just like a metallic Sharpie marker, I just did this kind of like modern farmhouse boho print random I just wanted it to fit the bottom so now before we get to our tree part of this I'm just taking some Dollar Tree 
foam for like floral, hot gluing that and pressing that down into the middle of this planter. I've had these Hobby Lobby greenery bush, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> forever. Um, this was $3.99. I've had it in my living room and I decided since it had some structure, I'm going to make it into like a inspired tree. So to get the branch or the stem of this tree, I'm taking the wood part off of a Dollar Tree plunger and I did not bother to take off the tag. I paint right over that with some brown craft paint and I decided to take like a scrap piece of fabric and kind of brush it on. It just was easier to paint this wood that way. Um, I cover up the tag. If it really bothers you, you could take off the tag. I just could not get it off even with like goo gone, blow dryer method. I did it all, it all didn't work. So I'm fine with that. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to apply some hot glue to the base stem of my greenery and then press that down, the wood piece down onto that. Then taking some cotton cord, I am going to wrap it around and knot it on the top and bottom just to secure this a little more. And then I will go back over it with that same brown acrylic paint just to have everything blend in. I did this so that the weight of the greenery does not come off of the, like our faux branch, if you will. Since I had some more nautical rope left over, I decided to cut two even pieces, hot glue them into handles on either side of our planter, and then I'll be taking some Dollar Tree Spanish moss and just filling that in the planter. There you have it, a little bit of like a two for one Dollar Tree DIY. I love this. I love that I was able to take just like a bunch of greenery and make it into a faux tree using things I've had, super budget friendly, using Dollar Tree items and just everything that I already had on hand to get this inspired look. For our next piece of farmhouse Dollar Tree decor, I'm gonna show you how to take a Dollar Tree sign, give it a galvanized look, and transform it into a more authentic piece of farmhouse decor. Taking a scrap Dollar Tree sign, I just went ahead and took off the staples and then took a Dollar Tree sanding sponge and smoothed that out. Once again, guys, I'm going with the galvanized look. That is kind of the theme of this video. Um, it's just super farmhouse and honestly, it's super easy to achieve with just layering a black, a white, and a gray craft paint. Um, this one, I left the base with the like MDF board the way that it was, that brown. I went a little heavier with the black and gray as the base and then I kind of like smudged and dabbed the white to give this more of like a real like metal look to this. And then I used my Cricut, I will put the font down below, um, and just spell out Herb Garden. And I thought this would be a nice piece of decor to go along with the little herb planters that I just made. Um, I feel like this is something that's very like Magnolia-esque, so that's kind of the look I was going for. And I really like this galvanized metal look. A sign like this, you can kind of prop up with your decor, or if you want it, to be hung up on a wall, an option is taking a scrap piece of like jute or string, some craft sticks, hot gluing them and securing them to the jute just to have an extra, I don't know, sturdy hanger. There you go. I'm like, I'm at a loss for words today, guys. I'm like, what am I trying to say? But yeah, this is how it turned out. Super cute. To me, it looks like really like an authentic, like metal galvanized sign, super farmhouse and super easy to make. Like all of these DIYs. That I didn't throw your stuff away Before you make up your mind That I'm nowhere to find I'm standing right here I know that I told you we're over I swear that I'm sober Just listen 
Our next Dollar Tree DIY is super easy. We're just gonna take one of the Dollar Tree baskets and give it a new, more modern farmhouse look. Our next Dollar Tree DIY, we are gonna use this basket. Any basket will do, I just like the texture on this one. And I'm also gonna be taking this yellow ochre paint from Arteza, and I am just painting it. It looks very yellow, it dries more mustard, which I felt like lent to the boho look. Um, I'm just painting the rim of this two coats. That's all you need I just like the contrast of this against the black and going a little bit out of my neutral comfort zone So I had some leftover beads from our wall hanging project in the beginning of the video strung them on Some cotton cord and then the great thing about this basket. It has little like slats or holes whatever you want to call it so I am just going to kind of loop and knot through the cotton cord and I thought it would be nice boho decor to me just has a lot of texture and different elements I thought it'd be really nice to kind of just drape that in front and it wouldn't be one of my DIYs if I did not use some jute I love jute especially for boho decor I'm doing the same thing that I did for the wall hanging just cutting some tassels um, I did these individual to jute, and I decided to just kind of string that through the handles on the basket, give it a little trim, and I did the same thing for the other side. I just used as many jute pieces would fit on the handle. I think I fit like 10 or 11, and that is it. Super quick and easy. To me, this is just all the elements of boho, a pop of color, texture some wood and i just love the way that i was able tr to transform a basic dollar tree basket and for our last dollar tree diy i made this a while ago it is a dollar tree modern farmhouse wall hanging using a dollar tree scarf and it was super easy to make and this is one of my favorite projects i've done so far since i've been on youtube Scarf that I picked up before Christmas at Dollar Tree and I just love the print it's very much of that modern farmhouse look with the black and white so this comes already folded over in the packaging and that's exactly how I'm gonna leave it for this project I am using another cardboard like insert roll this one is to a vinyl roll if you watch my previous tear tray video I use the insert of a Dollar Tree um, tool ribbon Roll. I like keeping the sturdy ones. They come in handy for projects like any project I seem to make I always want to use one of these so I just hot glued at the top fold the Cardboard roll again use a sturdy one and this is going to act kind of as my hanging piece and then make sure you cut any tags that are sticking out so they don't stick out now taking a piece of structured felt I am just kind of eyeballing and tracing on the back side a little pocket. This will be holding our greenery. I found that this is easier to use structured felt with or more stiff felt. If you use like traditional felt, it's very flimsy and soft, so it's not really going to have that structure and hold for the, I mean, they're fake plants we're putting in this, but still you want something that has a little bit of structure so that it doesn't like cinch and fold if that makes sense so I just kind of eyeballed a pocket cut it out and then I'm gonna apply that in the center again where I trace with the white make sure that that is hot glued in the back and I applied hot glue to the sides and the bottom not the top because we're using this as a pocket for some faux greenery and then just press down hot glue in the center and that is it I used some of the Dollar Tree grass. I thought that that kind of gave to that very simplistic modern farmhouse look. And I absolutely love how this came out. I hung it with some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and that is it. So that is it for this top 10 Dollar Tree farmhouse decor DIYs. A lot of these I did kind of recently, so in case you were new, you might have missed them. Some were older. Let me know down in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and if you've seen some of these before or if you're new, introduce yourself. I will have the original links to all of these videos down below in the description box. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, say hi in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.